Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad to be with us today. What we're talking about today is, is actually the number one question that I get asked, and I've been in practice 38 years plus my education, so I've been doing this about 40 years. Number one question I get asked is, why does my back hurt? And I see patients all day, every day, live, on the internet. They send me questions through the website, drjoe.com. And the number one question is, why does my back hurt? So we're going to talk about that because there are some things that you don't have to worry about. Some things you have to take instant action on. So you don't want to ignore this. So pain is a warning sign. It's telling you something's wrong. Don't ignore it. And it may not be you, but I want you to listen to this show because you may know someone. Of course, we know somebody who has back issues. And how do you know if it's something I need to take action on or if it's something we can put off? That's what we need to know. So if you're happy that we can walk on two feet, that we can sit up, we can stand up, you can thank your spine. Your spine is pretty good at that. And your spine plays a key role because the vertebrae, the way it works is your vertebrae, each one has a little hole in the middle of it. And they stack up one on top of each other. There's 24 of them. And they stack up and all these holes line up. And so this hole now becomes your spinal canal. The spinal column is the bones. The spinal canal is the hole in between the bones where it all stacks up. And then the spinal cord is the thing that is an extension of your brain that runs down and that sends nerves out to every part of the body. So your brain is sending messages down your spine, out your nerves to every part of the body, your arms, your legs, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your spleen, your toenails, your prostate, your spleen, everything hardwired to the brain. Two things can interfere with this flow of energy, chemical or physical. Now, chemical would be food, drugs, alcohol, environmental toxins. That's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the physical problems that can happen with the spine and what you need to do about them. You don't ever, under any circumstances, want to ignore back pain. Back pain is telling you that there's something wrong. Sometimes it's not anything you have to worry about right away. Sometimes it is. So let's go through some of the most common issues that occur with the spine and what you need to do about them. Now, a big term that people come to me with is say, Dr. Joe, I have a slip disc. Well, there really isn't such a thing as a slip disc. The disc is attached to the vertebrae above and below, and the disc is a little cushion in between, and it's really an extension of those two bones. And it's kind of like a jelly donut. It's kind of soft on the outside, and it's got this fluid-filled inside. And that fluid-filled inside is called the nucleus propulsus, and it acts as a cushion, a little bouncy thing, so that when you walk, when you jump, it cushions the bones so they don't slam into each other and then crush the spinal cord. Remember, we talked about that. So over time, you do things to damage your disc. You twist, you turn, you bend, you injure a car accident, sports injuries. The disc on the outside, that soft outer uh, layer, can get little tears in it. And if you get little tears in it, the nucleus propulsus, the inside, can ooze out through these little cracks in the disc. And that would be called what's called a ruptured disc. So the two terms that really make sense are protruding, which means the disc is bulging, or prolapse means it burst. That little fluid squirted out. So protruding and prolapse are really the right terms to use. A slip disc means the disc is involved, but it, it isn't really too diagnostic. Now you put too much stress on your back, you tear those little discs open, the fluid leaks out. Uh, might be called a herniated disc. You might hear that term. Now, sometimes you can have a herniated disc and not know it. Now, here's the thing. And you need to know this. This is a very important point about back pain. You can have an MRI, which is a great diagnostic tool. Love them. And you can show that you have a swollen disc or protruding disc, herniated disc, prolapsed disc. 39% of the time, that's not causing your problem. So there are 39% of the time when you see a, a positive MRI, it's a false negative. Uh, false positive, I'm sorry. So yes, it's positive, yes, but it's not causing your problem. Countless people have had surgeries because they had back pain and they had a positive MRI. They did the surgery on a disc and it failed. In fact, there's even a diagnostic code for insurance, because when we bill insurances, we can't put words, we have to put numbers, that's how the computer reads it. And there's a number, a diagnostic code called failed low back surgery syndrome. It's so common that the insurance companies have a code for it. So if you have a positive MRI, and you have, let's say, neck pain, or back pain, or shooting sciatic pain, doesn't mean the disc is the cause. 39% of the time, it's not. So that's why I suggest you start conservatively, if you can, with chiropractic care. 
Chiropractic care is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. And I have had innumerable patients come in over the years, and they have a positive MRI, and they get better with chiropractic care, and they have another MRI, and it's still positive. So we didn't fix the disc, we fixed the problem, but the disc wasn't the problem. So you don't want to jump right into surgery if you can avoid it. In fact, I was talking to a neurosurgeon friend of mine, uh, and I have a lot of friends that are neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, and they all say the same thing if they're good. We don't want to operate on a patient. The last thing we want to do is operate on them because they know that the failure rate's pretty high, and they also know that they're being monitored. Surgeons, doctors, they're monitored. And they monitor their success rate or their failure rate. Hospitals get man, you know, monitored too if they have death rate. And they, that kind of determines their rankings. So they don't want to have a record of failed low back surgery syndromes because it's going to be bad for their rankings and it can affect their insurance coverages and things like that. So a good surgeon is going to not operate unless it's a last resort. A good surgeon should say, hey, let's start with chiropractic. Let's add some nutrition to it. Let's maybe do some physical therapy, maybe acupuncture, dry needling. Let's work our way up to this surgery thing. But it's also a business decision too. I mean, we're all here to make a living and the surgeons make money when they operate. So I'm not always happy with MRIs if you jump right into the surgery. Another thing that can happen is called cervical spondylosis. This is in your neck. Now, it's the breakdown of your neck as you get older. Now, it could create arthritis, slip discs. But generally speaking, what happens is, is multiple discs wear out and the bones grow these little things called bone spurs on them. And if the bone spur grows away from the spinal cord, it's probably no big deal. But if it grows into the spinal cord or into the hole, there's little holes between each vertebrae where the nerves come out and then go out to the body. Uh, you can get a bone spur growing in one of those foramen, it's called, or the hole, and that can cause some real serious problems. And in cases like that, chiropractic care, of course, is the first portal of entry, um, but you may need surgery in cases like that. Usually a pretty simple surgery if it's just a bone spur digging into the nerve. Um, not usually a fusion. The fusions worry me. Now, I'm not saying they're not necessary. Sometimes they are. But the fusions worry me because once you fuse two vertebrae or three vertebrae or five vertebrae, whatever it is, you don't move. That area is locked forever. So the bones above and below have to move more to try to make up for the difference, and then they wear out pretty quickly. And the statistics last I read were that if you had one back surgery before the age of 50, chances are you're going to have two more before you die. Because it locks up a certain part of the vertebrae, part of the spine, then the bones above and below would have to move more, and that becomes a bigger issue. So the key to preventing cervical spondylosis, osteoarthritis is another form, it's a form of osteoarthritis, is to keep the joints mobile. And that's where regular chiropractic care comes in. You constantly, regularly keep the joints mobilized so that they don't rub up against each other and they don't wear out. Or if they do, it certainly slows down the process dramatically. So cervical spondylosis can cause a lot of pain. Um, if you're really, if you're getting older, the muscles can become weak because you're pinching the nerves that go to the muscles. And you may have to wear a neck brace or a collar for the rest of your life. Not a fan of that. That's why I prefer you get the chiropractic care first to try to get it fixed. Now, chiropractic care is not going to fix you in one visit. If you come in our offices in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. If you would come in our offices expecting to get immediate results after one or two visits, don't even bother. Sometimes we have those miracle cases where the patient goes, oh my God, I got no more headaches after one adjustment. It usually takes a series of adjustments to stabilize the spine. It's way less invasive than surgery. Way less, uh, way more safe uh, than things like drugs or surgeries. Um, and uh, success rate is extremely high. Dentists have the highest success rate of all healthcare professionals. You have a cavity, they drill it, they fill it, they send you home. Chiropractors have the second highest success rate. So I would go with something that most effective, least expensive, highest success rate. Why wouldn't you do that? You should. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, the Atlanta area. Uh, you can book it right online through our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. You just click on the office, book it right there. We'll call you the next day or that day and set it up. Make sure you get all the information you need. So do that. If you have pain, don't wait because it can lead to things like slip discs and cervical spondylosis, arthritis. So osteoarthritis is the bones rubbing up against each other and the discs actually wearing out. Women are more prone to get it than men, but men usually get it too. Now, it's due to bones out of place wearing out. So what makes sense? If the bone's out of place, 
Let's put the bone back in place. It's not hard to figure that one out, is it? So if bones are out of place, put them back in place. Not only does it unpinch the nerves in most cases, it takes the stress off the disc so the discs don't keep wearing out and you get osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is always mechanical or has a mechanical foundation. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, like psoriatic arthritis. There's different types of arthritis, but osteo is mechanical. The other ones are autoimmune. It's a chemical, the body attacking itself. And we've done shows on that. If you want to know more about arthritis, just type arthritis in our search bar uh, on the website, drjoe.com, and you can listen to shows we did strictly on arthritis. But what we're talking about today are, uh, is answering the question, why does my back hurt? And most importantly, what do I do about it? Because patients come in our offices every single day and they say, Dr. Joe, Dr. You know, whoever, Dr. Irwin, Dr. Kat, Dr. Amy, uh, Dr. Chris, Dr. Heather, those are my doctors. I went to the doctor, I got a diagnosis. Diagnosis was I have blank, whatever it is. And the first question we always ask is, well, what'd they say to do about it? And the response is almost always the same. Mm, I don't know. That's a word, by the way. I don't know. I don't know. Take some drugs. Here's some pills. Here's some acid reflux medication. Here's some painkillers. Here's some anti-inflammatories. Here's some uh, p- uh, pain blockers, uh, muscle relaxers. That doesn't fix the cause. It only treats the symptoms. Now, if I have a headache, and I have a traumatic brain injury, so I know about headaches. If I have a headache, sometimes I have to take some acetaminophen to calm down that pain and break that pain cycle and get me out of it. I'm not against taking drugs or surgery, but I always want to get to the cause of the problem and try to fix that if we can. Sometimes it's not fixable, but why not try to fix it? My father, we grew up very poor. My father was deaf, he was disabled. And so we didn't throw away things. We fixed everything. And as I got older, it actually became an issue because people who didn't have that in their lives are like, why are you, you know, running your kitchen sponge through the dishwasher? Why don't you just throw it away? Well, I'm gonna sterilize it, put it in a microwave, sterilize it, use it again. Well, why don't you just get a new one? They're only a dollar, two dollars. That's not how I was raised. I was raised, you recycle, it wasn't even called that then, you just reuse and fix everything. And that goes for just about anything in our lives. You know, my parents stayed married their whole lives, for almost 50 years, until my father passed and my mother passed. And so, yeah, we fix things. You don't throw things out. Relationships and products and food and anything. Nothing was wasted in my life. And so I feel the same way with your spine. You don't want to waste it and have it wear out because I can't get you a new one. We got to fix the ones we have. So if you have a spine problem, drjoe.com. Oh, by the way, normally the first visit is $712. My listeners or anyone they refer, $299 from $712 to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays and a complete nutrition evaluation. That's a lot. The x-rays alone are going to cost you more than that. It's just about anywhere else. So if you want to make an appointment, don't waste time. Every one of the things we're talking about today is better to fix it faster. DrJoe.com, you can book it right right there. There's a condition also called spinal stenosis. Now, spinal stenosis, if you tuned in 13 minutes ago when we started, the bones in the spine stack up one on top of each other, and there's a hole in the middle called the spinal canal, and that's where your spinal cord runs from top to bottom. If the bones are out of place, that canal gets smaller. It's called stenosis. It gets smaller. And that many times I have patients come in and say, Dr. Joe, I was diagnosed with spinal stenosis. They want to do surgery. Well, let's see if we can put the bones back in place and open up that canal first. If we can't do it, we can always have the surgery later. But once you're cut, you're cut. That's a problem. And so I'm not saying you don't need surgery, but I am saying let's try to fix it without the surgery if we can, because it's safer. And once you get cut open, many times the surgery is successful, but scar tissue forms. And when scar tissue forms, uh, it's really hard to break that scar tissue up. Black people have more scar tissue than white people. It's called a keloid. Dark skin keloids are scars more than white skin. And so you can get keloids inside the body as well. And I don't want you getting that. I want you to try to fix it first. So that's spinal stenosis. Sciatica, I, I don't know how many cases of sciatica we get a day, a lot. Um, I had sciatica. When I played football and hockey when I was in high school, I remember sitting on the bench and holding my left leg up to my chest and rocking. The pain was so severe. And then I go out and play again, 
and the pain was so severe, I'd sit down and have to hold my chest again, hold my leg to my chest. And I remember thinking, no kidding, in high school, I can't live my life like this. What would I have to do to cut my leg off? That was a real thought in my life. The pain was so extreme. And I didn't know about, I put heat on it many times. The coaches said put heat on it, which made it worse. Coaches said wear tighter uh, spikes when you played football. That made it worse. Um, when I finally, at 18 years old, I finally had an x-ray done. And the doctor said, you have a fracture at your fifth lumbar. I'm going to cover that in a second, spondylolisthesis. Um, he says, boy, you really shouldn't be playing sports. Well, sports probably broke it at some point in my life. And the fracture over time is, is I've stabilized it, which is good. And the sciatic pain is now non-existent, which is great. But that's all through chiropractic care. Because I remember the doctor looking at my x-ray and saying, you got a fracture at your, at your fifth lumbar. And I said, what do I do about it? He goes, oh, it's, it's a fracture. And that was it. That was the answer. It's I know it's a fracture. You just said that. What do I do about it? So there are special adjustments that we do for people with spondylolisthesis, like myself, that help stabilize that low back. And it works really well. But the, my spondylolisthesis was causing my sciatica. It could be a swollen disc. It could be a pinched nerve. The bone's pinching the nerve. It could be a psoas muscle that spasm. Many, many times it's misdiagnosed. Uh, the psoas muscle is a big muscle. It runs from your spine to your leg. And it's the reason you could lift your leg up. It's what's called your major hip flexor. I don't know how many times patients come to me, Dr. Joe, I've had injections, I've had ablations, I've had medication, I've had chiropractic care. The sciatica is not going away. And we check their psoas muscle. The, the, the sciatic nerve wraps around, kind of wraps around and through the psoas muscle. So if the psoas muscle spasms, it's pulling and, and tightening and pinching that sciatic nerve. And we have to go in there and release the psoas, which is an outside procedure. And once you release that psoas, it takes the stress off the sciatic nerve, and it works great. The problem with the sciatic nerve is not so much the pain, but the sciatic nerve is a big nerve. It's about the size of your finger. It's the biggest nerve in the body. But the sciatic nerve and the nerves that make up the sciatic nerve also control your colon, your sex organs, your bladder. So when you have pinched nerves in the low back, you might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Urinary issues, sexual issues, erectile issues, women, um, uh, 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 pr uh, private part problems. They may have issues within the sexual department as well because that's the nerve that controls the colon, sex organs, and bladder. So many times with chiropractic care, we unpinch the nerves in the low back and the colon, sex organs, and bladder start to work again. A lot of guys have hurt their backs over the years. A lot of guys have sexual issues. And you can take pills for it, but the pill only treats the symptom. It doesn't treat the cause. And in many cases, the pill can cause systemic damage, those little blue pills. Systemic meaning going through the whole body, through the whole system. So I'd rather try to treat it naturally if we can. And there's other things. You can do acoustic wave therapy on it. You can do supplements like Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support, which works wonders for increasing circulation. Uh, Dr. Joe's hormone support, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, super greens, an essential source. So there's a supplement protocol we can do, but if the problem is physical, we also have to fix the physical. And that's why little blue pills don't really do anything long-term. They might give you a little help short-term, but don't fix anything long-term and many times make the problem worse. So that's why we like to try to get to the cause of the problem. So if you have sciatic problem, it's also the nerve to the colon, sex organs, and bladder. It may not be showing up yet with the colon, sex organs, and bladder, but eventually it probably will. So once again, you want to make an appointment to come see us if you have back pain. And I don't see any reason why you wouldn't make an appointment to come see us because the biggest complaint I get, by far, biggest complaint I get, I'm not going to lie to you, I get this complaint every single day from my patients. Why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I wait so long to get in here? Because the problem was a physical problem. I had tr kept trying to treat it with drugs or surgery or uh, uh, herbs or supplements. I'm all for herbs and supplements and nutrition, believe me. But many times the problems are physical. So chiropractic care. There's also another uh, a muscle called the piriformis muscle. And the piriformis muscle can actually become weak. And the sciatic nerve runs underneath the piriformis. And the piriformis can put pressure on the sciatic nerve too. So chiropractic care, adjustment, surgery, injections, ablations, they don't work because the problem's a little lower. It's in the top of the butt muscle. That's called a piriformis.
had a patient call me the other day, uh, not a patient, actually, a listener of the show. And he said, Dr. Joe, I suffered for decades with the sciatic pain, did everything, nothing works. You talked about the piriformis muscle one day on your show. I figured out, I did, I, sh- I talked about an exercise to do for it. And he said, you fixed me. I've never even met you and you fixed me. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Don't even have to meet the patients, get them well. So sciatic pain is not something you want to jerk around with. Chiropractic first, always. Now, if you hurt your dish, get in a car accident, get hit, sports injury, you lose bowel and bladder control. That's a surgical case in most cases. Don't go to, don't come see us for that. If you're losing bowel and bladder control, you're peeing yourself or going to the bathroom, get to an orthopedic, a neurosurgeon actually right away. When it comes to surgeries, my preference is this, spine, neurosurgeon, extremities, orthopedic surgeon. Now, orthopedic surgeons can do spinal surgeries, and many of them are very good, but I always trust a neurosurgeon with the spinal issue, just because that's their, their, their kind of wheelhouse. Now, you could have other things going on. We're talking today about why does my back hurt, and you might have a tumor growing in your spine. A friend of mine out in California has a hemangioma, which is a bleeding underneath his spinal cord, uh, underneath what's called the dura. And it's so rare, he had to talk to three different neurosurgeons before one even knew what it was. And that's bleeding underneath. And that's, it's not really a tumor. It's just blood clot building up in his spine. But if you have a tumor, it could be a cancer. It could be non-cancer too. Uh, your back might hurt. Pain can spread through your body. Your arms and legs might go numb or weak. Part of your body might even be paralyzed. That would be a surgical case. That wouldn't be a chiropractic case. So I'm trying to let you know, chiropractic most of the time is your portal of entry when it comes to back pain, almost all the time. But there are certain times, loss of bowel and bladder control, paralysis, where you might have to go see a surgeon for that. Now, we can co-manage your case. That's the nice part. We have many cases that are under cancer treatments. They're under urology treatments, under gynecology treatments, under surgical care. And we co-manage the case with the other doctor. Nothing wrong with that. We do our thing. They do their thing. I don't do what they do. They don't do what we do. And so sometimes we may have to co-manage the case with another doctor. Perfectly fine with that. And a doctor worth his salt or her salt is also going to say, yes, I want to co-manage this case. If a doctor says, don't go get that treatment. I don't want you getting that treatment go find another doctor. If he gives you a reason, well, right now, or they call me, I like when the doctors call me and say, hey, listen, this is what we found. What are your thoughts? Can we co-manage this case together? And sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. Hey, listen, why don't you do your thing first? When they're done, send them in. Had a patient the other day, said his wife has breast cancer and he wants to start chiropractic and nutrition treatment after she has her breast cancer surgery. I said, what are you waiting for? He said, I don't know. I said, any reason why we couldn't do chiropractic and nutrition while she's under getting her treatment for breast cancer? No. Any doctors say no? No. Well, then do it. He goes, can I make an appointment today? I said, yes. So if you do want to make an appointment, if you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, headaches, um, nutrition issues, digestive issues, come see us right away. Stop wasting your time. DrJoe.com. You can book it right online. First visit is normally $712. We've reduced that for our listeners to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. So do that right now, DrJoe.com. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E, for the health of it. We have our podcast there, but we have over 3,000 hours of podcast on our website, Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E.com. Any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. What we're talking about today or answering a question for you is why does my back hurt? And I get question, I get that question all day, every day, seven days a week. I can't, I don't remember a day that's gone by in the past many, many years that I haven't gotten an email or a question through the website, drjoe.com, or uh, somebody calling into the offices saying, why does my back hurt? So I'm kind of giving you all the answers now as to what the most common reasons are. The most common of all the common reasons is the bones are out of place pinching nerves. And chiropractic care is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. So if you have back pain, there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be going to see us, hopefully, or some good quality chiropractor to find out what it is and get to the cause. Now, 
We did say earlier, if you lose bowel and bladder control, that's a surgical case. Usually don't go to a chiropractor for that one. Uh, if you become paralyzed, not a chiropractic case right away, get to emergency medical care first, and then we do chiropractic as a follow-up treatment. So it's really important that you get these things taken care of. If, if you're not paralyzed and lo didn't lose bowel and bladder control, you probably want to come see us. If not, go see the surgeon first and then come see us. And if you need advice or recommendations for surgeons, I'm happy to give you recommendations. I have a referral list that I've created, and these are the doctors that I would go to if I had a problem. So if you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, you can do it at drjoe.com in the Atlanta area. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. It's very easy to be a patient with us. And we accept almost every insurance. We accept everybody. We have to check your policy to see if there's coverage. And if you're ever in a car accident, folks, I've never seen a car accident if the car was damaged where there wasn't a spinal injury, ever. Thousands, probably tens of thousands of cases I've seen. Even if you say I have no pain, we've always found something that isn't showing up as a symptom yet, but will later on if we don't fix it. So drjoe.com. So we're talking about reasons you want to uh, get things checked if you have scoliosis. It's, one, it's a condition where your spine basically twists out of shape. The most, it usually affects children as they're growing. Uh, and if you look at somebody from the back, you can see the spine is twisted sideways. You bend them forward and you can see it's more exaggerated, the curvature. We used to have scoliosis checks in school. I'm not sure if they do that anymore. But if you have scoliosis, the initial medical approach is let's wait and see. It's got to get to about 35 degrees. It's called the Cobb angle. 35 degree angle, and then they usually consider surgery or maybe they may put you in a brace. The braces statistically don't work. Um, they still use them because the medical world doesn't have anything else to use. Uh, the smart, more progressive doctors realize that as soon as they see a scoliosis, they should get to a chiropractor. Because chiropractic, sometimes physical therapy, is the treatment right away for scoliosis. If you have it, or your children have it, and the doctor says, let's take a wait and see attitude. I would say, go to another doctor. That's like saying, well, my car engine's making noise, so I'm just going to kind of not fix it until it, until it totally shuts down. No, you want to come see us right away, drjoe.com. Uh, let's check it and see. Because with scoliosis, uh, you can see one shoulder's higher than the other, one hip is higher than the other, the spine is curved, you may be hunched over, depending how bad it is. Scoliosis always is going to get worse unless it's treated. Scoliosis doesn't stabilize or get better unless there's treatment involved. Now, what's the cause? The medical stand is that we don't know what, it ca what causes it. But what I found in my career, and I've been doing this 38 years now, I'm getting good at it. What I find is that it's something called a psoas muscle, P-S-O-A-S. It can spasm and actually pull the body out of place, pull the body to one side, and then the body has to compensate by pulling it back to the other side. It's called the writing reflex. It's in your brain, and it's not really a place, but it's an action that your brain does. So if my eyes are crooked, my brain wants to bring my eyes back to center so I can see and protect myself the best I possibly can. So when the writing reflex kicks in, so as pulls the spine to one side, you, you writing reflex pulls it to the other side, then it pulls back to the other side. So I always check the so as muscle. In my career, I have never seen a scoliosis patient that didn't have a spasm so as ever. I've seen a lot of scoliosis patients. It could be a swollen disc. It could be a pinched nerve. It could be an anatomical issue. Maybe one leg is physically shorter than the other. Very rare, by the way. But one leg can be shorter than the other. Uh, could be a muscular spasm aside from the psoas. So you want to get to the cause of that scoliosis as quickly as possible. You don't want to just jerk around around it because it's not going to get better on its own. Scoliosis is side bending. Kyphosis is humpback. Okay, if you remember, uh, was it uh, Young Frankenstein? Marty Feldman had the pump back. That would be a kyphosis. Usually happens when the vertebrae crack or break. So when you see it, like you could have bad posture, but if it's a hump back, it's usually one of the vertebrae collapsed, uh, usually the front of the vertebrae, and then the rest of the spine kind of bends forward. It's like a stack of bricks. If you crush one of them, the, the bricks are going to bend into that broken area. It can affect children sometimes, but many times it's a fractured vertebrae. Chiropractic care is very good for stabilizing the bones around it, but there is a surgical treatment where they can actually inject essentially cement 
into the crushed vertebrae or the compression fracture and stabilize it. So kyphosis many times is a chiropractic care. Sometimes we need medical intervention as well. You don't want to ignore it. It's just going to get worse. And the problem with scoliosis and kyphosis is that it compresses the lung field, compresses the heart, and it can put physical pressure on the organ. So it's not just pinched nerves. It's also physical issues that are occurring, putting pressure on the organ. So you don't want to ignore scoliosis, kyphosis, pinched nerves. It's important you get those fixed because if you pinch a nerve, and it depends which nerve is being pinched, it can hurt. Chiropractic care is really good at getting the hurt to go away. However, we said earlier, 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So for example, you don't feel your blood pressure. It's controlled by nerves. You don't feel your kidneys. You don't feel your spleen. You don't feel your prostate. So my team of doctors are trained by me to not only check the nerves that feel pain, but also check the nerves that don't feel pain. Because again, if we take you on as a patient, we don't want to get you out of pain. We want to get you well. There's a difference. So if you have these deformities occurring, you want to get to the chiropractor right away. And again, we can then co-manage it with a surgeon if necessary. There's a condition that I see not infrequently, a couple of cases a year, called ankylosing spondylitis. Now, you diagnose this with a blood test. So if you do a blood test, take a test for ankylosing spondylitis. And it's a really weird condition because it's an autoimmune condition. Your body is attacking itself and causing the joints to fuse together. Now, with ankylosing spondylitis, it usually starts in your hips and works its way up. So it usually starts with some back pain, men more so than women, and they just start to lose flexibility to the point where it's really tough to bend. And you try yoga, you try stretching, it's not working. Starts in the sacroiliac joint, your low back, and kind of works its way up the back. The danger of this, this actually could be deadly, is it can get into your mid-back and then you can't breathe. The ribs and the vertebrae have to expand to contract when you breathe. And if they're not expanding and contracting, you're not getting oxygen in and you can suffocate to death. In my career, I've had two cases come to me with advanced ankylosing spondylitis and it was so far gone that we couldn't help them. And both of them unfortunately died of suffocation. And it's a very, very slow death because you can still breathe a little bit and then each day you breathe a little less and a little less. And so if you have ankylosing spondylitis, you want to come see us right away because the only treatment for ankylosing spondylitis, aside from just anti-inflammatories, is to keep the vertebrae mobile, to prevent them from freezing up. It's kind of like something getting ice on it and you keep moving it so the ice doesn't stick. We do that to keep the joints mobilized. I've had many patients with ankylosing spondylitis for decades, never became an issue because they keep the mobility in the spine. So exercise is great, but those adjustments is really going to be the key to keep them, uh, those joints from fusing up or freezing up, however you want to put it. And it's not a, not a pleasant sight. So if you think you have, and that's why with back pain, we can take an x-ray. And if you think you have an issue, let's check it out. We can usually see ankylosing spondylitis as it advances on the x-ray. And then we can say, we got this. Let's go do a blood work to confirm it. We get the blood work done. Pretty cool stuff. It works pretty well. Now, I talked earlier about myself. I have a traumatic brain injury, uh, and it's a spinal cord injury. And spinal cord injuries uh, can usually come from accidents, car accidents, sports injuries, gunshot. In most cases, the spinal cord is bruised or part of its blood supply gets cut off. Uh, That can keep your brain from controlling your body because we said earlier The brain sends messages down the spine, out the nerves to every part of the body. And so if we traumatize the spinal cord, if there's swelling of the spinal cord, if there's a cutting of the spinal cord, that can be very serious. The chance of you getting better depends on how bad the injury is and how quickly you get it treated. In a spinal cord injury case, I like to refer you out to a neurosurgeon. Let them look at it. Let them do their magic. And then we co-manage the case with chiropractic care. So spinal cord injury is pretty serious. I got hit by a car when I was 10 years old. I was in Germany. And I remember none of it. He hit me, we think, going about 40 kilometers, which is about 80 miles an hour. Um, That's really fast. Uh, Crushed a bike. I was on this little bike. Uh, Crushed a bike. Somehow I survived. I flipped over from what I was told, landed on my head, rolled off the car, landed on my head again, and they thought I was dead. They covered me up with a sheet on the side of the road. Um, 
when I got put in the ambulance, I moved. And when I moved, they said, oh, he's not dead. The problem was that I was in Germany. I didn't speak German. My gra- I was with my grandparents. They didn't know where I was. There was no cell phones at the time. But I laid in that bed unconscious for three days. I was in a, essentially a coma for three days. Came out of it, and I had severe headache. Well, they didn't have MRIs at the time, and in Germany, it was a little more conservative in their treatment. They wouldn't give me any medication because they wanted to monitor my symptoms in case I had a bleeding in the brain or something like this. Uh, if they gave me drugs, I wouldn't feel it. The pain, excruciating. Okay. I went into neurogenic bladder. I couldn't urinate. I mean, it was a really serious spinal cord injury I have. And no one ever told me not to play sports. No one ever told me not to play hockey and football. And I did. It was stupid. And I wish the doctors had told me, you can't do this now. You have a traumatic brain injury. So it's a big issue. Um, Chiropractic care has stabilized it for me. Thank God for chiropractic care. I'd probably be dead by now. And so chiropractic care is my saving grace. And I have to get my whole spine treated, not just my neck. In fact, when I get my whole spine treated and not my neck, the neck actually feels better because everything's connected. And so it's a big issue. So if you have these injuries, come see us right away. I wish I'd gotten chiropractic care right after my trauma when I was 10 years old. I didn't get it till about 10 years later, eight, 10 years later. A lot of damage occurred in those 10 years. And it's permanent. So the sooner you get to us, the better you are. If you're ever in a car accident, if the car is damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen anyone ever in my career walk away from a car accident where there wasn't spinal injury. Even if there's no pain, that pain can take years to show up. You want to come see us right away. Now, there are scammers out there, and I wish we're trying to cut cut back on them. I know the licensing boards are trying to make this happen. But if somebody calls you, and says, hey, Joe, I see you in a car accident, and I'm, I'm with your insurance, whatever insurance you happen to have, and I want you to go see this Dr. Smith and uh, Attorney Jones. That's a scam. You're getting scammed. Don't fall for it. In fact, if that happens, you could even get the names of the doctors and attorneys and report them because no one is going to call you from your insurance company to say, go see a doctor. They get your information off the internet. Sometimes the People work in a police station, they're nefarious, they're not doing good things, they're stealing the information and selling it. Don't fall for that, please. I can refer you to chiropractors. I'd love for you to come see us, of course. We work with other medical doctors. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb in the Atlanta area. Now, who's a patient? Who's a good patient for us? Anybody with neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling? Uh, We said earlier, if you lose bowel and bladder control, not a chiropractic case right away. If you're paralyzed, not a chiropractic case right away, pretty much everybody else would fall under the category of come see us. So if you have health issues, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, uh, nutrition, of course, normally I do this show about nutrition. Today's more about structure. Uh, we would love to be your doctors. You can go to our website, drjoe, D-R-J-O-E dot com, book an appointment right online. We can usually get you in within 24 to 48 hours in one of our clinics. We accept people with all insurances. We have to check your policy for coverage. We have cash plans available, uh, payment plans available. We work with something called Care Credit, which is zero interest for like two years, 18 months maybe, I'm not sure. But don't wait. Pain is not going to go away if it's been there for more than three days. You want to come see us right away to get it checked. Now, if it does go away, that doesn't mean the damage has gone away. So drjoe.com, please stop waiting. We want to naturally get you well and keep you well. We want to be your doctors. And we want to navigate, kind of be the captain of the ship and navigate your health care plan as to what's going to be the best course of treatment for you. Because right now, the average person is just, you know, spitting in the wind. They don't know what they're doing. It's not a good choice. They might pick this. They might pick that. Let us help you navigate the best way to go. DrJoe.com. You can book an appointment right online. Uh, again, we can get you in very quickly if we need to. So what we're talking about today is uh, why does my back hurt? And some cases are serious, like spinal cord injuries. A broken neck or a broken back, that can be a serious issue. Uh, I said earlier, I have a fracture in my fifth lumbar. Uh, That should have been taken care of immediately when I had the pain, but I didn't know what to do. I was a kid. I was poor. We didn't go to doctors. My coaches could just tell me, suck it up and keep playing, which was really stupid on their part. And so now I suffer from an old fracture in my back. So accidents can cause broken bones. I don't know when I broke my back. I know that sounds silly, 
But I played football. I played hockey many times. I'd come home. I was sore. Who knew? I was sore. Suck it up. Take some aspirin. Go back out and play again. I appreciate the fact that coaches now are much more uh, aware of injuries and what to do about them. But you can break your neck. You can break your back. Doesn't mean you're paralyzed if you have a broken neck or back. I'm the perfect example. But broken vertebrae can hurt the spinal cord. And eventually, because they're out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they wear out. So that's called spondylolisthesis, what I have. There's a fracture in my fifth lumbar, my lowest vertebrae, and it slid forward. And that's torquing my spinal cord. If I'd had that injury in my neck, I would have been paralyzed. So luckily, it was in the low back. Not luckily as it's there. And it never got treated properly when I was young. And so it's always acting up. Uh, it's something called cauda equina syndrome. Cauda equina means the, the, the horse tail. And as your spinal cord goes down, somewhere around the third lumbar, fourth lumbar, it kind of looks like a horse's tail. It kind of frays out a little bit. So you can have a tumor that can push on the, on the cauda equina. You can have a vertebrae, a disc. Uh, many times you'll see uh, paralysis. You'll see loss of bowel and bladder control. Depending what's causing the cauda equina syndrome would determine what kind of treatment you need. Sometimes it's surgery. Sometimes it's chiropractic. You can have a fluid-filled sac in the spinal cord. That can be an issue as well. Many times that's a surgical case. So when do you call me? When is it time for you to finally call? If the pain lasts for more than three days, if it's shooting down your arms or legs, if you have numbness, if you have tingling, if you start to lose consciousness, if you lose bowel and bladder control, call us right away. Pain is worse at night. These are issues that need to be addressed as quickly as possible. The problem I see with my offices and the thousands, tens of thousands of patients we've seen is that people say, well, it's only pain. I got to go to work. I got to deal with the kids. I'll take some aspirin. I'll take some painkillers and I'll deal with it. Not a good approach because it's going to get worse. So if you'd like to make an appointment in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, normally, the first visit is $712. We've reduced that to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation. No reason why you should not be calling the office if you have pain. And you can go to the website, book it right online, or call us through the website. We're happy to book you as quickly as possible. Now, from a nutrition standpoint, back pain can be aggravated by what you're eating. And the seven foods that seem to fall into every category of a lecture I give you, the seven foods that you want to avoid for multiple reasons, including pain, are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I know you think that's your whole diet because it probably is. Might be. Some of you are good. But if you cut out what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, that's going to bring down the inflammation in your body. So regardless of what topic we just, just discussed you have, the easiest thing to do is get the diet straightened out. Uh, so that's why every patient that comes in our offices, we do a nutrition evaluation. I don't know of any other doctor's office, hospitals, anywhere that do that. We do this because we want to get you well. It's included in your treatment plan. There's no extra charge. Go over everything. Now, if I recommend supplements or something, there'll be a charge for that. But I'll gladly go over everything with you, with my patients, and explain to you, this is what we found. These are the recommendations I make to try to change your diet. These might be supplements I recommend, but let's do everything we can to bring down the inflammation. Because inflammation, in the short term, is not bad. I sprain my ankle. My ankle swells up good. It's created a natural cast. But over time, the swelling can become dangerous. If you have inflammation in one part of the body, it can go systemic. It can go through the whole body. It can lead to heart disease. It can lead to heart attacks. Uh, that bad diet can lead to diabetes, which can cause inflammation, which can cause problems as well. If you have one of those issues, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, type in the word diabetes, type in the word high blood pressure, type in the word heart, listen to shows we've done on these specific topics. But the ultimate goal is bring down the inflammation. Alzheimer's is tied into inflammation. It breaks my heart when I see people in senior housing and the crap that they're feeding these people. Jello with artificial sweetener in it and meats and breads and ice creams and cheesecakes and uh, 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 
donuts, sodas. It just hurts me knowing that these people are the most frail, the most fragile of our society, and we're feeding them this junk. That's why it's so important you understand now at this point in your life what's going to be the best course of treatment. Get the nervous system working, get the digestive system working, get the diet straightened out. If you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com, type in the words, seven deadly sins of nutrition. Listen to the, that was a lecture I did years ago out in California. Listen to the seven foods I want you to avoid. I'm going to tell you why to avoid them. Then type in, so what can I eat in the search bar and listen to that. That'll give you advice on the right foods to eat. Now, this is a rare show today. I didn't talk much about nutrition. Almost every other show I talk about nutrition. So if you have any questions that I didn't cover about anything, send it to me through the website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. If you like podcasts, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it, D-R-J-O-E for the health of it. Hundreds of hours of podcasts there. On our website, we have over 3,000 hours of podcasts. So you can just type in the search bar what you're looking for, back pain, neck pain, uh, liver, heart attack, uh, osteoporosis. Chances are we've done a show, a blog, an article on it, and it's going to give you tons of information. We have doctors, we have nurses, we have hospitals using the website as a referral source, as a reference source, I'm sorry. We have teachers from all levels, from grade school all the way up to postgraduate, playing my podcasts in their classes. As a class, this is the information I don't know you're going to get anywhere else. I don't know anywhere else you can turn to to get this information. So the website, drjoe.com, over 3,000 hours of podcasts. Any questions, send it to me through the website, drjoe.com. I'm happy to answer the questions. A little bot pops up. Hey, you want to chat? That's how you reach out to me. Happy to do what I can there. Follow us on social media. We post every single day. Fun facts, information, uh, we did recipes. Uh, we talked about how to reduce your blood pressure by using uh, potassium chloride along with your sodium chloride. A lot of health tips. You're not going to get anywhere else in one place. My handle is at Dr. Joe Esposito. So that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. I think we're out there. Uh, LinkedIn, at Dr. Joe Esposito. We want to be your doctors. Had a patient come in last week and she said, Dr. Joe, you said to me the other day on the radio, I said to her, we want to be your doctors. And she said, I want you to be our doctor. I want you guys to be my doctors. And I want to get well because I'm 62 years old. That's what the lady said. Um, and she said, I'm, I'm tired of being sick. And I realized that at my age, it might be the last shot I have to fix things. She was absolutely right. So stop suffering needlessly. Make an appointment right now, drjoe.com. We have a list of supplements on the website. I didn't cover them today, but you can look at the supplements. If you have any questions, you can order them right online or send us an email or a message through the website. But the best place to go, drjoe.com. Book an appointment right now. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in.